The Mac Studio has been out for a couple of weeks now, and it has divided opinion big time. So I decided to speak to a professional who's been using one for a couple of weeks to find out if it was a good investment for his business. I haven't bought a Mac Studio. I genuinely can't think of a reason to put one in this studio, ironically. That might change in the future, but at the moment I need to rely on the opinions of people who have actually got one in their hands. So I turned to my good friend Andy Wood, who runs a video production company called Pulse 8 in the UK. He's recently switched his Mac Pro for a Mac Studio, and naturally I really wanted to know what that transition was like. Is the Mac Studio suited to what they do at Pulse 8? Will he miss that Mac Pro? Before we get into it, a quick note to say that this video isn't sponsored, like lots of my videos, but it is supported by the lovely people who sign up to my Skillshare class. Now, I've got a brand new Skillshare class on that platform at the moment, which is all about editing your first video in Final Cut Pro. And if you click the link in my description, you can access that course for free. Anyway, on to the interview. I've been in sort of like the design creative industry for about, well, just over two decades but more importantly in the video industry for the last five decades. And it's myself and Rob, and we work with um, small to medium-sized businesses. Getting straight to the Mac side of things, uh, you had a Mac Pro, didn't you? What, what was the, um, the spec of your Mac Pro? I upped the graphics to an AMD Radeon Pro 16 gigabyte, and it was a 32 gigabyte memory uh, with a eight core on it. So it's your, sort of like your, your base level entry, I just know it cost me £6,000. I consulted with a friend of mine who said, that'd do the job. And I thought, yeah, it's gonna do the job for 10 years. No. <laughs> <laughs> so you went for the Mac Studio. Which, uh, what spec did you go for? I went for the base level because again, I consulted with my friend who said that Ultra for what we need would be absolute overkill and save myself a couple of thousand pounds. And I think it was definitely the right decision to go down that route. And, you know, for a couple of thousand pounds, if they brought out like an M2 or an M2 Ultra in two or three years' time, it's easier to upgrade to that after you just spent a couple of thousand rather than four thousand. For what you're doing, for the type of video work you're doing, you just don't see the Ultra as being a, a necessity, really. We worked it out that it would save us maybe a couple minute on rendering time. We actually did a test, putting it against the um, Mac Mini M1. And to render out a 45 minute 1080p um, took eight minutes and 37 seconds on the Mac Mini. The Mac Studio took just over six minutes. So I saved myself three minutes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but every, every minute counts, doesn't it? But that does illustrate how good the, the Mac Mini is as well, doesn't it? Looking beyond the chip, what was it about the Mac Studio that made you look at it and think, this is almost like made for us? Well, I think Apple are very clever with calling it the Studio. Um, I, my first thought was when I was watching the presentation was, yes, a computer for me at long last. I'm not particularly a fan of the design. It just looks like a fat version of the Mac Mini. Uh, but I just thought it was just perfect for a studio because you always had like the Mac Mini as an entry level, more consumer led. Then you went to the iMac and there's not a pro at the moment, so it didn't fit our category. And then I jumped all the way to the Mac Pro with the Intel on it. and that was sort of like even next level up. So it just sat in the right space for us, to be honest with you. And what were your first impressions of the hardware when you got it out of the box? I liked the backside of it more than anything, with all the cables and the vents. I think the front of it is just missing a trick. It's a bit boring. When, you've been, when I've been used to the, the cheese grater of the Mac Pro, I thought it just, I felt like I'd taken a backward step on a design. But as form factor goes, the size of it and the power you get, it's astounding, to be honest with you. And you're happy with all the, the I.O. in terms of the connections and stuff? Yeah, I used them all, straight off, used them all. I could have done with another Ethernet cable, because obviously we, we have an Ethernet to the NAS, an Ethernet to our network. So I had to, you know, put a USB-C on the Ethernet. Um, and actually the SD card reader on the front is by far my favorite part of it. It makes it so easy just to load, load in footage or plug USB-C in, fantastic. So the front of it actually, it's very convenient, really good. And in terms of when you first started using it, how, how did it feel, because you've, obviously you've had that experience of using a Mac Pro, how did it feel, uh, just not through you know, benchmarks or, or tests and things, but how did it feel compared to editing on the, the Mac Pro? It felt like smooth as butter. It was so smooth. I mean, the Mac Pro was good. I had troubles with the Mac Pro from copying and pasting from one library to the other in Final Cut, and I'd get the beach ball, the death wheel all the time. On this, to give you an example, we did a recording of two hours worth of footage in 4K, rendered it, the line just disappeared straight away. It's super smooth, not had a problem with it so far. Are there any uh, sort of challenges or um, I suppose downsides of the Mac Pro that this has solved, uh, it, that it's kind of fixed for you? What it's solved is we have um, FX3 
Sony FX3 camera, and the Mac Pro couldn't handle 422 codecs. It would stutter along. Um, we've done a test, and that, that is smooth as anything. Um, so we're now able to film in higher quality, more colors, better, just better everything really. It matches our cameras, to be honest. So it has solved that problem. Um, you didn't get the studio display, did you? What, what are your thoughts on the um, studio display? I was on the fence, to be honest with you. If it was a thousand pound, I would have got it without without hesitation because I love the design of it. But fifteen hundred, I was a bit like, that's a bit steep. It wasn't a high enough spec. I would want it like a thirty-two inch to twenty-seven. I love the design of it. I, I keep going back and forth and thinking, oh, it's lovely. Then I was like, oh, if I had surplus money in the business and money was an object, I'd probably buy a couple of them. But I want to see what else is going to come out later in the year. To be honest with you. <laughs> Uh, coming back to the Mac Mini then, so in terms of, of that of that Mac, um, what advice would you give to anyone else who, like a creative professional or just someone at home who wants to get more into video editing or whatever it might be, what, what advice would you give to them when they're buying their, their Mac Studio in terms of what they go for? My advice would, if you've got the extra money, go for the base entry Mac Studio, especially if you're doing video. I think Ultra is a bit of a waste of money for, for that side of things, unless you're doing 3D visualisation or high-end more you know, TV stuff, then I just think it's a bit pointless. Go for the entry level. Yeah, I was gonna say, who do you think the Ultra's for? Is it, is it really for high-end production, do you think? Or? So I used to do 3D visualization, and that's when I would have bought the Ultra, because it would have been much faster at rendering out animations or high-end HDR. Our personal workflow is, when we're editing a Final Cut, I'm not doing anything else, I'm not going between applications. So it's people who really are multitasking and pushing it to to the, like, you know, the nth degree on it, to be honest with you. And, and lastly, Andy, in, in terms of um, what you guys do in terms of video production and being the, the size of business you are, what, what does the Mac Studio mean to you going forward? What's, what, if you could sum it up, what, what's the, what is that computer going to do for you as a business moving forward? It makes our workflow a lot easier. As I said, Rob has a Mac Mini. We had complications between the Intel and the M1 on Final Cut, some strange things happening with plugins and things like that because um, they're not always compatible. So for us, it's going to be a slicker operation. We're going to download our footage quicker. Um, the form factor is nice on the desk as well. So it's just going to, it's going to speed up a production process, to be honest with you. I'd like to thank Andy and the team at Pulse 8 again for getting involved in this interview, but I'd love to know what you think. Has it made you want a Mac Studio even more, or have you got more questions? Let me know in the comments. If you've still got some time and you want to check out the other side of the studio setup, then keep watching for a link to my full review of the studio display. But until next time, thank you as always for watching, and I'll catch you in the next video.